Are you recording the lineup? Okay. Taking on the Hall them? Warriors. Pete and John back with you. A special year for Connard. Colleen Duggan in her third season at the helm has led this squad to a 180. Four wins two years ago, 16 victories this year. Top ranking in the state in terms of uh, number nine right now in the Hartford Current Poll and number six among the 30 teams that have qualified for the postseason in Class LL. A veteran team, six seniors, but a pair of sophomores in the backcourt that make them go, Lena Proetti and Delaney Connors. And it was Delaney who scored 10 of the first 12 points of the game in the first matchup, won by Connors at Hall, 60-19. to On the other hand, for Jeff Kaplowitz, it's been a good coaching job. Four games into the season, he was without his top two players. Mel Binkhorst tore an ACL. They already lost Mandy Mandyke to a knee injury in soccer. Amber Raisner and Lexi Gellerman have stepped up to lead this team to seven victories, and if they win today, they qualify for the states as well. If Connard wins, they get a share of the CCC Central Blue Division. John, first up, let's talk about uh, this Connard squad. 
What an absolutely incredible job by Colleen. As we said, 4-16 and 16 two years ago, and now in the top 10 in the Class Double L rankings. Yeah, just a great, great job by Colleen, uh, Tommy, the whole staff, um, and, the, and the seniors. You know, I was talking to Colleen earlier, and, you know, she really gave a lot of credit to her seniors uh, being the ones that really kind of built the program to where it is right now. Obviously, in, infused with some young, athletic, skilled talent hasn't helped, uh, 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 hasn't hurt, excuse me, at all. And, uh, you know, it's just a great mix of uh, bigs and talented kids and point guards and just kids that work hard together. So it's a, it's a really nice group. You know, you look at this squad, they don't have that one key performer that's going to just have your eyes pop off, off the score sheet. In fact, nobody has scored more than 17 points in one single game this year. They all average, all the starters, John, between 5 and 12 points a game. It's really amazing. Yeah, we were talking about that earlier with Colleen. And, uh, you know, as a coach, that's a great thing. Uh, and when you play someone and they come and scout you and say, oh, you got to watch this kid if they score 12 or 14 in the next game, you know, two other kids step up and, you know, take, take over. Um, it just means they're very well balanced and they run good team offense. Uh, it's a, it's a really nice place to be when everyone contributes like that. And I would imagine a very tough matchup as they go into the state tournament from just what you talked about. Yeah, a lot of times as a coach I can recall, like in the last game, you know, who do you guard? Or who, and, and, and more importantly a lot of times, who don't you guard? Maloney, you got to guard. Brock, you got to guard. So you can help off of other people that you don't think are a threat. Against Connor, you know, you, you help off a little bit too much, and I think almost anybody can hurt you. Let's talk about Hall for a second. Jeff Kaplowitz, very good coach, over 100 wins. Led his team to the Class LL semifinals five years ago, which was just a tremendous job unto itself. I think a good coaching job for him to have them at seven wins this year when you're playing without two of your best players. I talked about in the outset with Bencourse being out and Mandyke being out. He's done a really good job. You know, there are some in the community, there's been some rumblings that, uh, you know, maybe the, there's a, a little bit of an anti-Jeff camp. I think that's preposterous. I think he's an outstanding coach and a terrific guy. Yeah, a lot of people don't see that. Um, I could think when we lost our best score, Chuck Flowers, uh, one year, midway through the season, but they broke his leg in practice, a freak accident. Um, and the way that group rallied behind him, well, we considered what, I mean, and what we had to do to try to get wins that year. Uh, people don't see those things. And what, some of the best coaching jobs I've ever had were, were, I think, my efforts at least, were with teams that maybe didn't even make the tournament, but they got... Uh, they got to a point where they learned how to work together, execute, play hard. Uh, I remember Ken Smith uh, giving a, a team that was a sub-tournament team, sub-eight wins, and it came twice during the time that we played them. He goes, I love your team. They play so hard. You know, and people don't, don't see that in a lot of teams. So, I, again, Jeff, yeah, done a great job with his kids, you know, even with all those, you know, awful injuries that the team has had to endure. Um, I hope they will play, play hard for him tonight. Well, Bill Watson asking the crowd to rise as we get set for once again the playing of the national anthem. For the second of our double header, Connard 16 and three, but really 18 and three if you 
factor in the two holiday tournament victories that they had against Northwest and Glastonbury. Hall, on the other hand, 7-12. and 12. As you know, 8-12 and 12 qualifies for the state tournament. If they can pull off the upset here today, they would be in the tournament yet again. 60-19, to 19, John, was the score in the first matchup. How do you guard against overconfidence if you're Connored, and how do you try to gain some confidence and think you can have a shot of winning this game if you're Hall? Well, that's, that's a good question when you're coaching high school kids. Uh, um, you know, I, 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 the, the, the short answer to that is it's the hall Connor game. And, you know, if you're not motivated to play hard as you can on this game, uh, then you, maybe you should go sit, some, sit in the stand. So that's how the coaches are thinking anyway. Sometimes uh, you get lost in how well you're doing and um, maybe you don't give your best effort. I don't think that this is that kind of group, however. Connor controls the tap, and keep in mind in the first matchup, they jumped out to a 19-0 lead in that game and holding Hall off the scoreboard for seven and a half minutes. First shot by Morales is missed, but Connor controlling the offensive glass. Pass down low again, looking for Morales. They kick it back outside. Long range shot is short. Rebound Morales underneath. What a set she had. She was not going to be denied. No, she's a, she's got great feet. She's very active uh, uh, inside. So I'm, I'm sure we're going to see stuff like that, picking up loose uh, uh, rebounds and loose balls in the middle. Nice job posting up earlier. Good start. Desiree Morales averaging 8.9 points per contest. And according to Coach Colleen Duggan, she's been the most energetic of all her players over the last month, has really been ignited. Shot out of the way, and it's banked up and in. Jordan Lonice getting the start on senior day has made it 4 0 Connor just 75 seconds into the contest. Pass is deflected back into the hands of Lexi Gellerman. Shot on the way, and it's stuck right next to the rim. That's something you see about once a year, Coach, and uh, it'll be a jump ball. Yeah, it's a, it's, unfortunately, it's a violation, and we're going to go to the possession arrow, and we'll see. It's just kind of a weird thing, yeah. I do want to say, though, in terms of the Connard and uh, team play and the way they care about each other, um, uh, Jessica Lowenice, Lo senior captain, gave up her starting role uh, to start this game so that another one of the seniors that doesn't usually start can have her moment in the uh, spotlight. Really awesome, uh, awesome leadership. Really is. And uh, foul on the play against Hall. That's going to be their first. And it goes against Caroline O'Keefe, the junior center. Chieftains in possession. They're up 4 0. 90 seconds gone by, opening quarter. Second of the doubleheader. Connor going for the sweep. The boys won the opener 46 42. Pass is stolen by O'Keefe. Gets it in the backcourt, and this is Boyle. Part of the three-guard attack for Jeff Kaplowitz and company, and Boyle's shot is rejected by Morales. So we talked about Desiree on offense, and she runs the court very well to get back to swat that one away. Yeah, we were talking earlier about how, guessing how tall Coach Duggan, <laughs> Duggan is and how important that is in uh, ladies' basketball to have someone that's long like uh, Desiree is, and there's an example of it. You know, athletic kid. Um, able to help off and make it tough for the other team to score. Very valuable. Connor, some pressure, ball stolen. This is Amber Raisner. Nice pass to Gellerman, misses the shot, but she got fouled. We talked, Coach, about all the Hall injuries, but two players that have remained healthy and uh, two of their best, Raisner and Gellerman, Great combination in the backcourt, and they're young, as most of the kids are for Jeff this year, and uh, they're going to be great players before their time is done at Hall. Yeah, Jeff and I were talking about the unfortunate injury that they had to endure this year, um, and he, we talked also about the number, the, the large number of freshmen uh, that he does have, and, you know, coaches joke about that being a, a good, bad problem. Uh, you know, it's, it's bad initially when they're learning their way, um, but down the stretch, they're going to be in, uh, real strong contributors for his program. We saw that from the boys' game. James and Fair, Hall and Connor, respectively, contributors as freshmen. Two for two at the line, and it's 4-2. Shot on the way, and it is good. Jessica Lonice. That's her 11th three-pointer of the season. 
They change it to a two. It's six to two. Pass underneath, and the shot is out of the way, and it is good. So there's Gellerman. A little pressure in the backcourt. And Lexi Gellerman off to a good start. And it's 6-4, to four, 2 minutes and 18 seconds in to this opening quarter. Breaking the press easily, and the baseline shot is on the way and good by Morales. So she has a quick four, and it's eight to four. Amber Raisner, second in the conference in scoring. That time dishes it off, and the baseline shot is good. So already, Coach, we're seeing a much better start for Hall than compared to the first matchup against Connor. Yeah, they're, they're, they're taking shots that are available. They're, the game's up and down a little bit right now, which lends itself to both teams having more opportunities to score. So, yeah, um, Hall looks good right now. Nicole Kratis of Connard called for steps. And that'll give the ball back to Hall. Hall coming off a victory on Thursday night over Windsor. That kept their tournament hopes alive. They'd be in the tournament right now if they could have combined that with a win on Wednesday at home against Avon. Not the case as they were beaten in a defensive struggle by Avon. Talked about Raisner, 14.6 per game in conference. That's second only to Jeanette Wadalowski of Southington, who averages 14.7. And speaking of the conference, Connor trying to gain a share of the conference title with a victory today. Trying to hang their first banner here at the Connor Gym for the girls since 1986. 30 years, been a long time. Raisner guarded closely on the far side by Low Nice. They try the pass underneath and it's picked off and stolen by the Chieftains. And then it's stolen back by Raisner into the front court. Nice bounce pass and the game is tied. Marie Cotter gets the bucket that ties the game at eight. Yeah, the, um, Hall's uh, picking up full court a little bit. And, and Connor's a little rush to, get, to push the ball up the court. Just an errant pass that time. Um, good strategy by Hall to get, get up and make them play a little bit. Nicole Kratis at the other end for the Chieftains. Getting to the line as Colleen Kennedy committing the foul for Hall. So here's Kratis averaging 7.5 points per contest. And she makes the first. She was the MVP of the holiday tournament and on her way to play at Eastern Connecticut next year. Yeah, I heard. I'm so happy for her. I, I tease her a lot all through her, <laughs> her career about cutting her hair when I was coaching, and uh, I wish she would have paid for me. She's a tough kid. She's aggressive uh, in the post. She has good post moves. Um, I, I, <laughs> I would have loved to have coached her. She's a, a tough, tough kid. I'm sure she's going to do well at Eastern when she gets there. Hits two at the line, and halfway through this opening quarter, Connor has a 10-8 lead. Here's Raisner with the handoff. Gellerman. Back out top to Cotter. Puts it back in the hands of Lexi Gellerman, the sophomore guard. Got two of the leading three-point shooters in the conference in the backcourt for Hall this afternoon as Raisner misses that one short and the rebound to Morales of Cotter. Raisner has 54 threes, 29 for Gellerman on the season. A lot of scoring right there for Jeff Kaplowitz and company. Foul on the play, and Connard back to the free throw line. Here's Delaney Connors. Delaney in the first matchup, Coach, had 10 of the first 12 points for Connard as they raced out to a 19-0 lead in that one. Yeah, I'm not surprised. She can really stroke it from the outside. And Peretti's in there now. The both, the both of those girls, uh, uh, when they were freshmen, Tommy, I came and watched the JV game, and he goes, you're going to watch these kids, pl uh, love to watch these kids play. And uh, they all run. As soon as the ball th was in their offensive hands, they, the five of them would just run down the court. And Peretti does, in my opinion, just a great job of finding people once she's pushing the ball. She was the one that just passed the ball forward to Delaney, I think. And uh, her, another example of uh, just a consummate point guard. You saw a great hustle right in front of us, Sarah Hoysel. Talked about Tom Varenci. He's got half his softball team on the squad. 
So he's very familiar with these kids, that's for sure. You know, sometimes there are kids uh, in, at schools that are uh, program lifters, you know, they play, they're multi-sport athletes and they're just tough kids that are good athletes. And they may not be the best person in both sports, but they know how to work, they know how to give to a team. And that's certainly true for the Chieftains as well this year with those kids. It's a good point, Coach, and, and one that I talked about with Colleen the other day. She said, hey, Sarah Oisel in particular has made herself into a basketball player. She was always a, a multi-sport athlete. Basketball, maybe not at the top of her list, but she's really emerged as a basketball player. Yeah, tough kid. She's a competitor. You know, that's really what um, people that love to play sports that aren't great at one particular sport, they give um, to the team their energy, their ability to stop, make a stop, rebound for someone, move the ball, whatever it takes. Um, and that's why I think these kids are uh, that good this year because all of them give what they can to the team. And that's how teams succeed. That sure is. That sure is. It's a special group. And a group that, as we talked about, won the holiday tournament. So when you add that to the equation, they're really 18-3 and three overall. Heading to a conference tournament and on to the state. So they're going to be a 20 win team, and that's something you see every day. First of two by Lexi Gellerman, missed at the line. She'll get another. Two team fouls against Connard, three against all. One of two for the sophomore guard, Lexi Gellerman. Has two games this year of 20 plus, does Lexi. There's Morales, down low, misses the shot, and the rebound is Connards. Those are the types of loose balls that if Hall is going to have a chance to win, Coach, they're going to have to get all of those today. And there was Hoysel again, right, weak side, you know, just outworked uh, uh, her girl that time for the ball. Those things, possessions are huge in basketball. Our rebounds are huge in basketball. It's another possession. Um, There's Desiree again down low. And it's 12-9. Connard lead at three. Desiree Morales has half her team's points. She has a half dozen already. Here's Raisner, guarded by Connors. And Tula Kangas in the game. And the pass down low is swallowed up defensively, and then a uh, traveling call is being made. And Tula Kangas, a freshman forward. Her dad came over to say hi before the contest. She was the first off the bench in the first matchup. Running one-hander is missed by Connors, and it goes out of bounds. It'll be Hall basketball. Delaney's not going to make all of those, but she sure is fearless, isn't she? Yeah, when I first saw her play, um, I was very impressed with the way she can um, penetrate to the basket, and she does it at speed. And like you said, it's not always, but the, po the fact that she's getting there is, uh, is, is making an impact uh, on the other team. They're either going to foul her or she's going to lay it to someone or she's going to uh, score it. So she does a great job of getting to the basket. Raisner and Gellerman both missed threes. In the open court, here's Peretti missing the shot. There's Hoysel, another rebound, and kicks it back outside. Three ball for Connors, missed short. And they're going to get over the back on Hoysel that time. Again, as a coach, I don't think you mind those fouls as well because she's so super aggressive and she's going to get a lot of those offensive chances. Exactly right. That's, a, that's a, just a great hustle foul. She's doing what she does, one of the things she does really well, and that's rebound and defend. So, you, you know, you just, she, and she knows she's going to get them every once in a while, but she's not going to be, stop being aggressive at all. That's what you want from kids like Hoysel. She's a tough kid. So Hall hanging in there. Again, we chronicled how the first time they got together, they were down 17 after the first quarter. Running one-hander by Gellerman is missed. Ball is tapped out of bounds. And they're going to say countered basketball. Of course, if you're, you're Jeff Kaplowitz right here, obviously at any time of the game you want to be in front, but I think you have to be encouraged just being down three on the road against a powerful team like this. Absolutely, a absolutely. And a lot of times when... You know, we were faced with, on the boys' side with uh, running into a Weaver, Windsor, Bloomfield, or one of the other state, con you know, contention kind of, state championship kind of teams. We used to tell our kids, listen, here's what we have to do to try to stay in this game. Um, and you can't win the game till the end of the game. 
So let's try to be in the game at the end. So um, I'm sure he's very happy right now to be where they're at. And there's a three. And they've tied the game. Lexi Gellerman, her 31st three of the season. And we're deadlocked at 12 with 10 seconds to go in the quarter. Connors in the front court, hands it back outside. This is Jessica Lonice. Five seconds to go. And they're called for steps. Nicole Kratis picking up the pivot foot that time. And what a moral victory for the Warriors. Yeah, in certain terms. And I can maybe almost feel like the Chieftain's getting a little impatient about, you know, the, the score being the way it is. You know, make it, maybe they're making assumptions about what should be happening in their minds instead of just worrying about playing. Uh, so they just need to focus on what they do best and, you know, work as hard as they can. They'll be fine. Well, that's the end of the first quarter with the score. The Hall Warriors 12 and the Connor Chieftains 12. As you continue to watch high school basketball on WHC-TV Channel 5, presented by the War Chief Sports Council. And the council would like to thank its many fine sponsors, including those at the all-state level, Keating Insurance, MACA Plumbing and Heating, Reed and Reach PC Counselors at Law, ESPN, Connard and Hall PTO, as well as Mr. and Mrs. Jonathan Gibson. Thanks to one and all for your continued patronage of the War Chief Sports Council, which then in turn gets to have games like these broadcasts on WHC-TV. Thanks as always to our fine crew and the many volunteers working the cameras, as well as the Channel 5 gang in control. G2 Huntley and Jen Evans do such a magnificent job for us, and we thank them for spending a lot of their Saturday with us. Pete Lamoureux, John Benier with you. We saw the Connard boys win 46-42 and would dearly love to see another really competitive game here between the girls as well. Well, it's shaping up to be that way right now. And, uh, you know, it, again, all Connard, right? And... Uh, You'd be, a, you'd be surprised how far, you know, a lot of emotion and energy can take you when, you know, you're in a kind of a David and Goliath, if you will, kind of situation. Um, and, you know, I, I haven't seen Hall all that many times this year, but I'm very impressed with what I'm seeing right now. They're doing a great job. Yeah, they really are. And it's point we'll continue to make is that much, much different from when they got together on the 22nd of January at the Robinson Gymnasium. Gellerman with the basketball, picking up her dribble. Goes to Raisner. Good defense there by Connors. O'Keefe tried the dribble drive. Controlled by Cotter. Her pass is stolen by the Chieftains. Always looking to run. Here's Connors leading the break. Pull up jump, no good. Rebound underneath, control by Hall. Gellerman in the front court. Here's Raisner. Jumper is short. Hall tries to save it, and Connor has it, and we're going the other way. We talked about Hall taking care of the defensive glass. They've actually had three offensive rebounds so far. Something probably is not going to uh, be maintained throughout the course of this game. Connor with a decided edge among the bigs. Yeah, with Connor, you know, she just jumped out of bounds and slapped that last one back in there. The rebounding is a lot about positioning and, you know, energy and effort. You know, if they want to give it, Hall's doing a pretty good job of defending, you know. And if they keep Connor off the glass, for the most part, they can keep themselves in this game. One thing they have to do, they have to keep Morales from getting the ball five feet away in the paint. She'll, uh, she'll burn you every time. She has eight to match the eight for Gellerman. And it's 14-12, Connor back in front as we've played a minute and a half here in the second quarter. Four games of basketball on this court. All started with the boys' JV game. Won by Hall, 54-51. Connor winning the next two games. The girls' JV, 48-44. The boys' varsity, 46-42. Spinning move by Connors for Morales. There's the drive, and missing the shot that time was Kratos. 
Hall fielding it on the baseline and causing the turnover, and Connor will get it back. Prietti from the corner. Short, Morales the rebound. Prietti directing traffic. Tries to play catch along with Kratos, and they fumble it out of bounds. Yeah, I think in any sport, when you have, as you talked about, the David and Goliath matchup, the longer you let the underdog stay in the contest, the more confidence they get, and then probably the better chance they have to stay in it longer. Yeah, we talked a little bit about that early. Um, and kind of right now, just looking at some of the faces of the kids that make things go for them initially, they yeah, look a little hesitant right now. They're maybe, you know, just sort of thinking their way through things instead of playing their game and, you know, executing at speed. So that little bit of hesitation right now is is, is helping Hall, actually. Um, they're not running their offense kind of like they, they should or generally would do, I think. Here's Prietti pulling up for the shots, deflected, and said last touch by Hall. Out of bounds, it'll be Connor basketball. Had a pretty good pace offensively in the opening quarter. We were tied at 12 at the end of one. And so far in two and a half minutes of action, only two points. That changes right there, the three ball by Prieti. And actually give her a two at 16 to 12. Four nothing countered in the second quarter. This is Raisner with the basketball. Nice crossover move, running one-hander is good. Pretty move that time by Amber Raisner. Amber's really been aggressive with her dribble. There's another example of it. She's, uh, she's doing a great job getting to the rim. She's, a, she's an athletic kid. And can beat you with the left hand as well as the right. Yeah, that's nice. It's a nice, you go, in, any, in any sport, I guess you can go either way. It makes uh, that much harder for someone to guard you. Connor getting back to the free throw line. Foul is against Boyle, the freshman, Steve's youngest daughter. Yeah. And at the free throw line. And Kratos hits the first. Called by her coach, Colleen Duggan, speaking of Nicole Kratos, as a workhorse and a defensive power who also chips in with seven and a half points per contest. One of two at the line, and the lead is five. 17, or I'm sorry, three, 17 14 countered, 445 to play here in the second quarter. Gellerman picks up the dribble, tied up nicely by Prioretti, and finally Jeff Kaplowitz, I believe. Does he have to burn a timeout? Yeah, he did. Um, they got surprised a little bit about Connor uh, stepping up to defensive, half court defensive pressure right there. And maybe that's what the, they're talking about right now. Maybe, you know, getting up and forcing Hall to do a little bit more ball dribbling and ball passing. And uh, we'll see, they're, they're um, starting to, I think, uh, as a coach, maybe worry about you know letting the offense dictate the, the momentum or tempo of the game. Sometimes you have to go to your defense and that helps people to get in sync a little bit better. It's the old Jim Calhoun drill with his teams over the years. Yeah. yeah he, oh yeah, <laughs> not, not too shabby. 440 to go here in the opening half. Glad you've joined us on this frigid afternoon in West Hartford. Driving move, shot in the paint is good. Pretty move that time and Caroline O'Keefe able to get it to fall. And we got a one point basketball game as we come up on the midway point of the second quarter. Paretti drives, no good but she was pushed and the foul will get here to the free throw line. Lena, sophomore guard. Plays soccer and softball as well. Raisner with the first foul. And the first foul shot is missed by Prieti. Called by her coach, 
the most mentally tough kid on the floor. I, I, I had her at eighth grade at Cedric, and I, I love watching her compete, even in phys ed class. Um, I just, and I agree with them 100%. Obviously, they, they know her much better than I do as an athlete, but there's no fear in her and a, and a couple other kids on this team as well. They're, that's what I love about her. I, <laughs> she's just a tough kid. Two-point game, 18-16. There's a shot down low, and it's good, and we're tied. Marie Connor, the junior center, had just three points against Connor the first matchup, already has four this afternoon. And boy, you blink, coach, and Connor comes speeding down in the other direction, and they get themselves right to the free throw line. Yeah, I grew up in the 70s playing basketball, and it was all about running up and down, so I, I'm just got a big smile on my face watching these guys getting up and down the court. But, you know, and, the, they're, and they, they are starting to try to get out after a, hall, a little bit half court, you know, and you're going to have guys left open every once in a while, like just happened down there. So you're kind of rolling the dice a little bit defensively. But, you know, if you do it over time, there's going to be a lot more pluses than minuses. Uh, so we'll see if they keep up the pressure half court. I know I'm going to date us here, but when I say this, it's like old ABA basketball, isn't it, when you watch Connor's offense? Oh, uh, yeah, it's awesome. It, it would be perfect the ball, if the ball was colored. Yeah, <laughs> Red, white, and blue. Yeah, that would be perfect. There's David Thompson and George Gervin and Dr. J and Dan Issel and all the like. Ball is thrown away. And Connor gets it back. 19-18, the Chieftains lead. They have not led by more than five here in the opening half. Kudos to the All Warriors for being very, very competitive. Here's Connors, kicks it off. The three ball in the corner is short. Missed by Jessica Lonice. And a jump ball is going to be called. Gagliani in on that uh, jump ball, just streaked over to the sideline, just tried to wrestle it out of the, out of the hands of the Hall player. Um, again, good example of just playing hard, scrapping after the ball. It's good stuff. Leaving it all on the floor, as they say. And off the uh, alternating possession as the two officials huddle. And it's going to be Hall basketball. And they have a chance to take the lead. Here's Raisner, crossing the midcourt line. Picked up by Proietti. Nice backdoor feed, and the ball is thrown away. She was looking for a cutter that time, in particular Caroline O'Keefe. Here's Morales the other way, misses the bunny, knocked out of bounds. It'll stay Connor basketball. Delaney Connors will put it in play. And there's a stoppage because there's blood on one of the players. Caroline O'Keefe. So she goes to the locker room to be attended to. Good automatic rule. Yeah, it is. I mean, it, it, sometimes as a coach, if it's, uh, you know, sometimes I feel if it's not flowing out of me. <laughs> Or anyone else, then we're pretty, we're okay. It's good, but I guess you know, better safe than sorry. And you know, we're so lucky to have trainers here and every day at practice to, to look out for every conceivable kind of thing that goes wrong. Because of being a little facetious, but it's really a, a joy to have and not have to worry about kids being treated well or uh, making sure that they are treated well. Saint Just on the last foul. And Hall with another opportunity to take the lead. And the shot is good. And the Warriors have the lead with 2.40 to go here in the first half. Gellerman has 10 points. Long jumper, no good. Morales, the rebound, she got uh, called for steps. A little anxious underneath. 
And you can just sense the confidence and the momentum growing on that hall side. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Connor's trying to push the pace a little bit. They haven't quite uh, gotten into their comfort zone. I think they would like to obviously hit the pace of the game a little bit faster at both ends. Um, and that just hasn't happened. Haas made shots and scrapped around and kept themselves in this game. Gellerman missing the three. Back the other way. Yeah, St. Just missed the shot. Connor the rebound. Morales the shot. No good. They scrap underneath. Another offensive rebound shot was missed, but a foul. So there's St. Just who missed the original shot. She's underneath and gets another offensive rebound. Three chances for Connor, and they finally get to the free throw line. Yeah, they, you know, great, great second effort, obviously. But um, I'm thinking back on, geez, like the. This half and how many drives to the baskets and layups they miss and putbacks they miss. Um, so, you know, we talked about making baskets on the boys in the boys game, but that, you know that's kind of I think the Connor guys are like, geez, you know, keep playing hard. The the ball will go in the basket, um, but it can be frustrating for kids while they're going through that whole thing. So we'll see we'll see how they uh, mentally work through this. Tatiana St. Just, senior player. Gets the second, and she's tied the game at 20 with two minutes to go here in the opening half. Here's Raisner. Called by her coach, Jeff Kaplowitz, one of the best ball handers he's ever had. Gellerman tees up a three and misses. Rebound loose underneath. It's fought for, and it goes out of bounds. So the held ball, and Connor gets it back. Gellerman leads all scores for Hall with 10. Morales leading Connor with eight. Here's Morales. Pass goes baseline. St. Just outside Peretti, tees up the long jumper, it's no good. Rebound is tipped, controlled by Connor. St. Just another shot, misses it long, and it's rebounded by Gellerman. Here's Lexi into the front court for Raisner. Thought about a three, now tees it up. Off the front of the rim, no good. Rebound underneath, put back, no good. Third opportunity and a foul. So now it's Hall not being denied off the offensive glass. They get three opportunities, ending in foul shots. Yep, their energy is good right now. They're defensively, they're hitting the boards hard. They're, you know, they're not afraid to, to shoot the ball. And if there's a long miss, they're getting after it. Um, you know, and, you know, maybe the Chieftains need to take a page out of their book right now and start scrapping around a little bit on the boards and on defense a little bit, get themselves back into the game. Marie Cotter, junior center, hits the first, and Hall has their second lead, 21-20. Second is good. A minute to play, opening half. Totally not what we expected. 22-20 Hall. There's Connors, misses the three. Rebound underneath, controlled by Marie Connor. Here's Raisner in the front court. Nice crossover move, has the ball knocked away. Controlled by Hall. And then stolen by the Chieftains. Into the paint, crazy shot by Connors before she did so. She's called for steps. Good defense by Hall, she had nowhere to go. Had to pick up her dribble. Yeah, nowhere to go. And you can see there's a frustration on her face right now. She's trying to make a little bit more out of what she had. She should have probably just pulled up. Um, yeah, but she's, you know, she's making a hard play, trying to draw a foul. Um, she didn't get it that time. 18 seconds to go. Raisner down low with the pass, it's knocked away and stolen by Connor. Lead pass ahead, here's Connors, misses the layup, going for the jump ball, and then a travel is gonna be called as Morales came down with it and is called for steps. So Jeff Kaplowitz off the bench telling his team, hey, you have nine seconds to go. Buzzer went off inadvertently. And they'll start the play all over again. Oh 
Here's Raisner. Down low with the pass and a foul with 2.7 seconds to go. And Gellerman gets herself to the line. The foul was against Proretti, her second. And she misses the first. Second leading scorer on this team at 12 points per contest. Couple of games this year at 20 plus. And the second rims out. Ball is loose, it's on the floor. And that's the way the first half ends. So a game that was tied at 12 at the end of the first quarter and we see Hall outscore Connor 10-8 in the second. And surprisingly, 22-20 coach here at the intermission. Yeah, they, you know what, to Hall's credit, they've done a great job of penetrating baseline, penetrating down the middle, you know, looking to stick open shots, scrapping around for rebounds. You know, and, uh, you know, again, to their credit, they've done a really nice job of, you know, competing in that first half. So, um, you know, Raisner, great job uh, off the bounce and con continuing to kind of give uh, Hall a direction offensively. Uh, and a bunch of the other girls, too, uh, just pitching in, doing a great job. So we'll see what happens coming up in the second half. Should be interesting. And again, big surprise after 16 minutes here at the Connor Gym. It is Hall 22, Connor 20. This is West Hartford High School Basketball, presented by the War Chief Sports Council in association with Channel 5, WHC-TV. John and I will be back later in the intermission as we get things ready for third quarter action back after this.
And welcome back, everybody. Just about ready to get set the third quarter. 22-20 Hall in front. Lexi Gellerman leading the Warriors with 10 points, pacing all scores. Desiree Morales with eight for the Connor Chieftains. Wanted to pay homage, if we could, to the Connor seniors who were honored before the contest today. Jordan and Jessica Lonice, as well as Olivia Gagliotti. Desiree Morales, Nicole Kratis, and Sarah Hoysel, the one Hall senior, Melanie Binkhorst, of course, who has been injured and has missed the last 16 games of the regular season. Coach, take us into the uh, Connard locker room. What do you think uh, Coach Colleen Duggan said to her troops at the intermission? Well, I'm sure she maybe, she maybe chastised them a little bit for um, maybe thinking too much, being a little tentative, not, a, not attacking um, with purpose. You know, maybe assuming some things would happen instead of making them happen. Um, and, uh, you know, if you're on the hall side, you, it's like, hey, you know what? You guys are in this game. You're playing hard. You're, we're, we're playing defense. We're getting rebounds. We're shooting the ball. You know, they got to be real happy. So it'll be in interesting how each team uh, uses their physical and emo emotional energy to their, you know, to their be uh their benefit so uh, it'll be interesting to watch the next couple minutes see what happens O'Keefe with the foul Kratis with the bucket and Nicole at the free throw line completes the three point play so Connard back in front 23-22 talked about what's at stake here today Hall's win would get them into the state tournament a Connard victory, and they would share the CCC Central Blue Division title. Foul line jump is short. Rebound underneath. The shot is put back up and in. Marie Cotter getting excellent inside position. She's been a force on the offensive glass. She sure has. She's got nothing to hang her head about the way she's played thus far. You know, uh, hustling around for rebounds, you know, right there. Another example of it. Playing good defense. She's having a great game. Their, their offense, too, is interesting because they, you know, they dribble at someone on the wing and uh, they immediately back cut. So if the Connor kid turns her head, which they have initially, then, you know, they're beat. Um, if they play their person too tight, then um, raisner has got a lane to drive to the basket. So they're going to have to figure out how to help out on defense and, you know, maybe stop Raisner from uh, penetrating to get them a stop or two. Morales with the miss, and Hall gets the rebound. Seemed to me, or seemed to you as well, Morales just rushing a lot of her shots down low. I think that's true for all the Connor kids right now. I've been kind of not only watching them, but after they score their faces, and they're, they're expecting things to happen. They look disappointed when they have a miss. Uh, for me, when a kid misses, I'd like to see less uh, disappointment and more determination. You know what I mean? We talked about the tennis players that had an edge back in the, the 70s or even earlier whenever it was and those people were always had almost a scowl on their face of, uh, when they didn't perform well so I think they need to have a, a little bit of a, you know a, a determined look and, and they'll be fine they'll, they'll get back in their uh, groove yeah the first foul shot is good for Delaney Connors sophomore guard averaging 10.9 points per contest And the second one is good. So two for two at the line, and the Chieftains back in front. As we seesaw along, it's 25-24 with two minutes gone by here in the third quarter. This is O'Keefe with the driving move. What a shot! She gets it to fall. She beat Morales that time, and the Warriors have the one-point edge. Back and forth we go. This is Connors. Back outside, Kratis. Connors controls for the Chieftains. Back outside, Morales, her pass is stolen by the Warriors, and then an ensuing foul. So good defense by Hall, and then the ensuing frustration foul on Morales. Yep, uh, just watching Hall, they're doing a great job of helping all over the place, just playing off their guys, plugging up gaps that people might want to dribble into. 
And right now, the Chieftains are uh, struggling to find out an answer to that. Um, I'm not sure whether they're going to continue to run what they run um, or, you know, run a set that's specific to, to something. Uh, but uh, we'll see. I'm sure they'd like to run like they're doing right now. Trying to convert on the fast break off the turnover. And they turn it over themselves out of bounds. So all gets it back. They've been outscored by the Chieftains 5-4 here in this third quarter, but it's still Hall with a one-point edge. Raisner hands it off to Gellerman. What a dynamic tandem they've been. Beautiful pass. Finding the open man underneath, and the layup is up and in. Marie Connor, the beneficiary, and Hall leads by three. They just run, they're just really executing well right now. <coughs> There's not a whole lot Connor could do, and else would just, you know, maybe just try to focus on playing solid defense, stay between your kid and the basket. Hall's doing a great job of executing right now. Long shot on the way, no good, but a foul. Pushing foul that time as Boyle took the initial shot. Was she fouled in three-point land? Yeah, um, uh, Delaney uh, got a hand up, and then uh, when uh, when the girl came down, she blocked her out a little bit, probably a little bit too hard beyond the three-point line, so she got caught for it. First off the back of the iron, no good. They're, they need to, they're, little, they're a little dejected right now. They got to pick it up emotionally. Um, and that's where defense, defending and rebound can come in and can pick you up as an athlete and get you physically going in a game, and which gets you mentally going a game, which tends to transfer into positive things on the offensive end. One out of three at the line for Boyle. Two possession lead for the Warriors. 29-25, their biggest advantage this afternoon. Great spin move that time, and Kratis able to finish off. Great up and under. Uh, that's just textbook uh, post play right there. That's one of the reasons why I like her. She's got great feet, great inside moves. That's a nice little help. If she could do more of that for Connor, that would be a, that would be a good person to find. Long shot, rims out. Weak side rebound is controlled by the Chieftains. 29-27. Hall with the lead. Connor the basketball. St. Just a long three. Rims out and the rebound to Hall. Past the midway point, quarter number three. Second of our basketball day in West Hartford, doubleheader. Connor boys won the opener. Hall trying to get some revenge for their school here in the nightcap. O'Keefe with the bounce pass, foul line, jump is good! Lexi Gellerman off the pass that time from O'Keefe. And steps in the backcourt. And they turn it back over to Hall. With a four-point edge. Quick rest for Morales. Yeah, yeah. Well, Delaney's out, you know. Uh, she, she just needs to compose herself. She's, she's a great player. and uh, they're, in a, they're in a little bit of a funk right now, a little flat. Gellerman, nice stroke by her. Gellerman shot, no good. Morales, the big rebound. Pants it off to Prorietti. Long pass ahead is too long, and it's stolen by Hall. Lexi Gellerman into the front court. That's the ball knocked away by Morales out of bounds. Last touch by Cotterd. And it'll be Hall basketball. And a timeout being taken with 3-10 to go here in the third. Hall in front of Cotterd, 31-27. to The Ward Chief Sports Council would like to thank our many fine sponsors, including those at the varsity level. Low Tide Photography, Dave Newman Photography, Cork and Bottle, Blue Plate, Fast Eddie, West Hartford Youth Basketball, the West Hartford Boys Travel Basketball Team, Open Arm Christian Ministries, Final Cut Barbershop, the Edward Connors Insurance Agency, Stanley and Elaine Phillips, Beth Barry Brown of the William Ravis Agency, and West Hartford Girls Lacrosse. Thanks to one and all for their patronage of the War Chief Sports Council allowing us to broadcast games here on WHC-TV, Channel 5. Coach Class Double L, the girls, Mercy on top of perennial power. Connard 
number six now at 16 and three. And it's interesting because two teams on the list, Southington and Glastonbury, splitting with both of them. And it'll be very, very interesting to see going forward if they get maybe a rematch with one of them in the uh, state tournament. Yeah, they've, uh, Coach, uh, Coach Duggan you mentioned earlier about how happy she was with wins over uh, Southington, Northwest, Farmington early on. She couldn't really choose a best game, but those were games where they had to come back in a couple of them to eventually win the game. Um, those kinds of games are really great um, practice for tournament play where the stakes are a lot higher. And, um, you know, I, 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 I bet you they're, they're hoping to get another rematch and uh, show, show the other teams just how much they've grown throughout the season. And the win over Glastonbury came in that holiday tournament that uh, the Chieftains are able to win. Beating them and Northwest, as you mentioned. But right now, the task at hand is trying to figure out a way for Connor to come back against a very, very tough Hall Warrior opposition. And if you had seen the first matchup between these two squads, at Robinson Gym on January 22nd. You wouldn't believe what you're watching here this afternoon. Great move in the lane and the scoop shot by Boyle is good. Just a tough, tough, determined drive to the basket. Um, you know, the, the game like this with the, the Chieftains, just kind of watching, nice drive here by Kratos. Um, it, you know, it's hard for teams sometimes when they have a kind of a slow start or the other team, uh, like Hall, puts up a really, really competitive effort. It's hard for uh, the other team to find their, find their, you know, their, their rhythm. So, um, and they're not out of this game, uh, but, you know, they, sometimes you feel like you're not in the game. Uh, so they got, they got to convince themselves, just forget what's going on, be confident be patient probably more importantly and uh, allow their rhythm to come to them. Boyle hit that last shot for Hall. She has five in the game and now a steal by the Warriors. So Hall, a six point lead and the basketball with 80 seconds to play here in the third quarter. Raisner thought about the three, gave it to Gellerman and she was fouled. Jordan Lonice, the guilty party that time for Colleen Duggan's team. That's her first and only the third team foul. Hall has just two team fouls themselves, so neither team close to the bonus right now. There's the drive, no good with the shot by Raisner and the foul call. What acceleration Amber shows from time to time, Coach. She really does. I was just wondering how I would play her. I, I, I would give her more space so she wouldn't make me look bad, beat me off with her dribble. And maybe that's what the Chieftains need to do. Just let her, you know, let her give her a little bit of space. You know, she's dribbling again at um, the wings of on her and her offense. And if the Chieftains play that kid too too tight, there's a back cut, and they've got a couple of those opportunities already. But sometimes, sometimes playing a team too hard on defense allows them to do a couple of things that they're hoping to do and sometimes playing them a little softer and forcing them to score in a different way is what might you know turn the trick you know so we'll see um, but there again you're, you're thinking we have to play harder <laughs> to get back in the game and sometimes that's not the best way to go in defense because you extend yourself and you leave yourself vulnerable in other ways another counter turnover haul into the front court here's Raisner cuts to her right Here's Boyle, into traffic, makes the shot, incredible. She's got seven points in the third quarter. Yeah, that ball just about creeped up over, over the rim and went in. It was, it was a great effort. She didn't quit on it, followed through, and now they're off and running. In the open court, Gellerman misses the shot, rebound, put back up, no good, and Connor gets the rebound. Hall was that close to getting a double-digit lead, and good effort by Lexi Gellerman knocking the ball out of bounds. 37-29 with nine and two ten seconds to go here in the third quarter. Kratos inbounding. 
Here's Connors bringing it across. Five seconds to go. Pulls up for the jump, too strong. Gets her own rebound, misses the shot. And Jeff Kaplowitz is beside himself because his team has committed a foul with one and two ten seconds to go. Uh, they're being aggressive. What are you going to say? You know, they just there was you know it wasn't a bad foul. They just kind of came together on the rebound. Um, good hustle by uh, I think it was Delaney, isn't it? Uh, to rebound their or her miss and now she got a chance to to make two free throws. And she makes the first. She'll get one more. She's a 73.8% free throw shooter. And she makes two of two. 37-31. And that'll do it for play here in the third quarter. But how about the Warriors? 15 to 11, they outscore them here in the third, and we'll go to the fourth with the Warriors up six as you continue to watch West Hartford High School Sports here on WHC TV. Channel 5 is presented by the War Chief Sports Council. John and I will come back with fourth quarter action right after this. Connored eight minutes away from a share of the league title. First possession of the Warriors. This is Gellerman. Back in the hands of Aber Raisner. Does a good job of dribbling out of traffic. Gets it down low. And a stoppage and a foul being called. A pushing foul against the Chieftains. Talking about being fearless, she just dribbles right in and out of double and triple teams. It's amazing. Yeah, I was watching her eyes. She's really, um, she's really good at probing and then finding little gaps to penetrate into. Um, that's that's a that's a higher level skill. Um, not many people have the control of the ball or um, the vision to see those kinds of gaps. She does a great job of it. And you see Hall getting more and more possessions, Coach, with second, third, fourth opportunities. And eventually they're going to go in. Right, yeah, and so, the, you know, on their side of the emotional, you know, balance sheet here, their, their confidence is growing as that happens, and it might be dinging into the, the kind of girls a little bit. Um, I'm sure, though, uh, we're, we're not far from seeing a little bit of, uh, of a run by the Chieftains. They're not, they're not out of this game by any stretch of the imagination, so. Now they're 16 and three for a reason, and they're certainly not going to go down without a fight. I agree with you 100%. It'll be Hall basketball underneath. There's a big development in this game as Morales has just fouled out of the contest. Big, big development. Yeah, yeah. You know what though, in a game like. In a game like this game, where the Chieftains are struggling a bit, sometimes the next person that comes in off the bench is a different, gives a di the team a different kind of vibe, you know, and things change. Um, she's been struggling a little bit, as have many of the girls today offensively. So we'll see. A lot of times it, it gives a, a team a shot in the arm. Well, we'll see what happens. Amber Raisner getting set to inbound. Sarah Hoysel guarding the inbounds. They get it into Cotter. And she's called for steps. Little indecisive on the far sideline that time. 
And a turnover gives the ball back to Connor. A minute gone by, fourth quarter, 37-31 Hall. Kratos with the basketball. Left side, this is Proretti. They find Kratos. Pretty spin move and with the left hand up and in. Is the old up and under. The 50-year-old men watching this will appreciate that move, I'm sure. 37-33. The lead down to four. Long range three for Raisner. No good off the front of the iron. It's loose. And Hall just seems to be getting all the loose balls. Underneath, Connor with the shot. Oh, she's called for steps. She had gotten free on the baseline and unfortunately picked up the pivot foot. Yeah, she did a great job posting up, but just as she received it, she got bumped a little bit and knocked her off balance. She's doing a great job posting up in there. 37-33. Under six to play here in regulation time. Long three for Connors, no good. Rebound Connor. They get a second opportunity. Proretti spins. Nice bounce pass. They kick it back outside. St. Just for three, no good. Rebound to the Warriors. Good look that time. In the open floor, Raisner misses a shot, knocked out of bounds. Good job defensively by Kratos. She might have got away with one there. I think if I did that somewhere, I might have got arrested for it. But, you know, good aggressive play by both of them. And uh, she did get a good chunk of the ball. So here we go. Could have been simple assault. Pretty feed in front. They missed the layup. Rebound back up and in. Lexi Gellerman, her 14th point of the night, and it's 39-33. Connors the other way, no good. But Delaney will get herself to the free throw line. I'm still marveling over that last basket by Hall. What a move. Yeah, great move, and, you know, she stuck with it. Fouled her, fouled her shot like everyone's taught to and uh, paid off for it. And Connors misses the shot. So he talked about, on average, Delaney makes three out of every four at 73.8%. And the second is good. So one of two for Delaney Connors. And it's 39-34. Hall with the lead and the basketball as we come up on five minutes to play in regulation time. Raisner, the running one-hander, off the rim, no good. And it's rebounded out of traffic by Connors. Speeds into the front court. Here's Delaney. Loses control of the dribble and then picks it back up. Kratos, the spin move, missed it. Ball is loose underneath. It's a tied ball. And the jump ball and the possession arrow stays with the Chieftains. Yeah, she went one. That was the third catch in the post, and she tried the same move three times in a row, and that time the defender was waiting for it. Um, just needs to mix it. And Reisner hits the first of two. Big foul shot right there, because that once again restores a two-possession lead for the Hall Warriors. Two of two for Reisner, and it's 41-36. Hall's lead at five, three minutes to go. Here's Connors, bounce pass, kick back outside to Peretti. Good, tenacious defense all day by the Hall Warriors. Now they work it inside. The shot is on the way and is good. 41-38. Crowd picks up its intensity. Raisner the bounce pass for Cotter. Gellerman for Raisner. Works left baseline. Reverse shot is no good, but a foul on the play. Boy, she could beat you in so many ways, can't she? She's very determined. Uh, came all the way across after a couple looks to try to run offense initially, and then, you know, came hard with the dribble baseline and went for the reverse and 
you know, she got found. She was, yeah, very determined. And misses the first foul shot. Crate has picked up that last foul for Connor. That's her second, team's eighth. So they're in the penalty. And Hall is not. One of two for Raisner. So she's hit three of four her last two trips to the charity stripe. And it's a two-possession game. 42-38, 2.20 to go in the contest. Into the lane. Shot out of the way. Good and a foul. Talk about determination. How about Kratos right there? Great move. A little up fake. I'm trying to get through the old-fashioned way. You know, again, you can kind of feel a little energy starting to build. The last defensive possession the Chieftains have, except for that foul, was really good. Um, so maybe they're building something here. So here's Nicole Kratos. Trying for that old-fashioned three-point play. She misses the shot and is rebounded by O'Keefe. Hands off to Gellerman. She puts it in the hands of Raisner, who walks it across. 42-40 Hall, 2.08 to go. Jeff Kaplowitz off the bench, asks for and receives a timeout. The War Chief Sports Council would like to thank its many fine sponsors, including those at the all-state level, Keating Insurance, MACA Plumbing and Heating, Reed and Reed PC Counselors at Law, ESPN, Conard and Hall PTO, and Mr. and Mrs. Jonathan Gibson. Thanks to one and all for their support of the War Chief Sports Council to make broadcasts like today's possible. You now you can hear Jeff Kapowitz in his huddle imploring his team, knowing that they're just two minutes away from the state tournament. What a feeling that must be. Yeah, <laughs> it's right. Yeah, so he's talking about shutting uh, Nicole down in the post and how to better defend her. Um, you know, and then maybe uh, maybe about how we're going to finish this out, what they want to do on offense, whether they really want to attack and go forward, whether they want to take some time off the clock. Um, and we'll see. And on the other side, you know, they're going to get after it, I think, too. Uh, kind of going to push the ball, be aggressive going towards the basket. Sometimes teams that are trying to, you know, be a little bit more careful open themselves up to being attacked um, when they're not being aggressive. So we'll see what happens. So here are the Warriors. Led by Raisner into the front court. Two minutes to go. A pass is knocked away. It's loose on the floor. It's stolen by the Chieftains. Here's Connors into the front court for the Chieftains. Cross court pass. Hoysel wide open. Hits the shot. It's a two pointer. Her foot was on the line, and she has tied the game at 42. But good for her. You know, she had a big shot, wasn't afraid to step up and shoot it. All of a sudden, you feel some energy going towards the Chieftains. Gellerman the shot, no good, and Connors with the rebound. Delaney Connors into the front court, missed the shot, but she drew contact, and she'll get herself to the free throw line. It's amazing how quickly things can change. Third foul picked up by Gellerman. And here's Connors at the line. And it's good. And the Chieftains lead for the first time since the second quarter. Two for two, 44-42. Yep, uh, up by two. They're coming up and playing a little higher on defense. I've noticed that they've been helping out a little bit more on Raisner and on the pick and roll situations. What a steal by Peretti. Great steal. Connors in the open floor and she's fouled. Ten to, ten to three run, coach. Yeah, Razor got her hand caught in a cookie jar there trying to make a great play. I saw totally what she was trying to do. It's funny how, like, uh, you know, the momentum, you know, Hall has had a good chunk of it for this game, but all of a sudden with a minute to go, it feels like uh, it might be going uh, Connor's way. And then, you know, with a couple baskets here, you know, things change emotionally. So we'll see. We'll see what they do. First is good. And here's a critical fall shot 
which would give Connor the two-possession lead. And it's good. 46-42. Timeout, 108 to play in the contest. Well, yeah, what a contest. And if nobody else scores in the final minute, we'll have the exact same score that we had in the first game. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I don't know how uh, um, coaches on the Connor side want to handle this after, of course, they're exhorting their kids to make a stop here. And even if they're up one, if they happen to hit a three ball, then, you know, do they open up the floor, add a little a five out kind of a spread offense um, a couple possessions ago to maybe use some clock up and force Hall to come out and maybe whack them or make a, a, you know, a really aggressive defensive play that they'll try to punish them for. And, you know, on the Hall side, you know, where, when, when do you get aggressive and how do you want to do it, you know, right now will be interesting to watch as well. Full 60 second timeout. Hall, the first team back on the floor. And we'll see exactly what Jeff Kaplowitz has dialed up here for his team. Two possession contest. 108 remaining. Do you look for the quick two here, coach? Or do you wait for the for the great shot or do you start hoisting? I think you're gonna wait around too long down uh, down four. So yeah. you want to attack, you know, maybe force them to foul you while you're trying to get a good aggressive high percentage shot. Um, but you got to be aggressive here. Here's Gellerman driving baseline, misses the shot, rebound is loose, and it goes to Connor. So close to so close to being a good basket, yeah. just so close. Got bumped a little bit, um, you know, and then they have to foul. You got to foul right now. So, you know, same scenario coming up, uh, regardless of the outcome. And the Chieftains are going to have to keep people out in front of them, you know, and try to play solid defense without reaching or fouling or what have you. Foul number four on O'Keefe. Kratos at the line. Misses the first. It was a one and one. Rebound to Hall. 50 seconds to go. Into the front court. Raisner with a long three, it's good! 46-45, timeout, Jeff Kaplowitz and the Warriors. I think I want her autograph at the end of this game, Regar regardless of the outcome. Um, just just huge courage to, to take that shot at you know, that point of the game. And uh, now, you know, puts them right, obviously puts them right back in it. And um, we'll see, you know, if they, it's anybody's game, obviously. And, uh, you know, it's just Hall Connor <laughs> again. Uh, just great stuff. Great stuff by both teams. Coach, with a three there, does that change the strategy? Maybe you don't try to foul them as quickly as you can? Well, how much time? I, I don't see the clock right now. But, I mean, they, as, as quickly as they push the ball and get up the floor, there's no rush to, you know what I mean, uh, get a foul right away. But um, coaches usually give themselves a good buffer, and I'm sure they're being told how, at what time is the cutoff time when you have to foul. Um, so uh, once I see how much time is left, you don't want it to get too much under. Yeah, you don't want it to get under 30 by any stretch of the match day. So that's what I would do. Okay. So the green light for fouling would be on at that point if it's necessary. Connard 46, Hall 45, 42 seconds to go. Prairie, long pass, finds Connors, head of the field, and she's fouled from behind. Great baseball pass that time. Yep, great place. Uh, you know, darn Ray Schwartz and Simsbury used to do that uh, to that uh, us, do that to us all the time. You know, you, when you need a possession or a stop or force a turnover, and you commit too far and you don't protect it back, they go over the top, and that's. Just what Connor saw, but and great hustle. Um, I don't know who gave that foul right there, but you know, great job to force the Chieftains to make free throws. First is made by Delaney Connors. Even if she makes the second, still a one possession game. That's what Raisner hitting that last three did for the Warriors. 
Clutch foul shots, 48-45. Here are the Warriors. Pressure in the backcourt, here's Raisner. Cross the midcourt line, 32 seconds to go. Cuts to her left, picks up her dribble. Gets it to O'Keefe. Here's Gellerman, backs up, bounce pass down low. Cotter, the shot is good. And an immediate timeout with 21 and 110 seconds to go. We got a one point game again, 48-47. Jeez Louise, it just doesn't stop, does it? You know, great play, you know, they did a great job start stopping Raisner and um, you know, they reversed the ball. And a great attack from the other side, you know. Great, just good, uh, just good recognition and aggressive play. And I thought uh, just a great play by Gellerman backing up beyond the three. She got all the Connor defenders to bite, and then that opened up things for Marie Connor for the basket underneath. Gellerman's done a great job. She's, uh, I, I don't know what year she is without looking at a sheet of paper right now. She's a sophomore. Oh, man, that's, you know, good stuff for them. Because <laughs> she's, you know, that was a savvy play by her part. Like you just said, to draw people up, make some space in the post to get that pass in there. Yeah, with Raisner and uh, Gellerman, certainly Jeff is uh, looking forward to the next two years with his backcourt. You know what? In basketball, I think at this level, for boys and girls, if you have a if you have a couple guards um, that are this experienced and can do what can, they can do, you're going to be in good shape. And they have, and then they have young kids uh, behind them to work with as well, or with them rather. They're, you know, I know it's a tough year for them this year with all the injuries and everything, but uh, you know, the future looks good for them. Connored the lead and the basketball. 21 and 110 seconds to go. Hoysel getting set to inbound. To the near side, they get it in to Proretti and the foul. Very good, only took 1.8 seconds off the clock. Yeah, good quick foul, now we're playing the the free throw game and uh, you know, in this, po- in this spot, you got to make them, right? It's the old, the old basketball situation. You got to foul, get yourself back in it. And then, again, if it's this close, if someone on Hall or Connor, you know, drains a three, that could be huge down the stretch, and you could definitely see that happening. And the first shot is no good. It is a double bonus situation after the 10th team foul. So a second opportunity here for Proietti. It's good. One of two, 49-47, 18 seconds to go. Here's Raisner into the front court. Oh, my, a block. Yeah, I think it was an illegal screen up top. That's a tough one, Uh, unfortunately for Hall. uh, With about 12 and a half seconds left now, um, they're going to have to come up and uh, give a foul right away again. Peretti inbounding. Long pass ahead. There's Kratis. Misses a shot and a late foul call. So Nicole has been so clutch at the free throw line. Will step up and get two more. And you would think if she goes two for two here, Coach, she'd put it away, making it a two possession game. Yeah, yeah, obviously. they're in a good spot right now. Uh, obviously, she's got to <laughs> get it done. Um, and then that uh, puts a little bit more pressure on Hall. But, uh, <laughs> but I think Coach Ferengi was not happy about one of the two bigs on Connor releasing to the basket. Someone I don't think was where they were supposed to be. So you know, those little things are big things at the, you know, in games like this and t- with times like these with 10 seconds to go. And she makes the first. 50 to 47. Here's the big one to try to make it a two possession game. Misses, rebound to Hall. Nine seconds to go. They need a three to tie. Gellerman in the front court. Pass is deflected, it's loose on the floor. Connard has it and Connard's gonna get called for steps. 1.4 1.4 seconds to go. So Hall's going to put it in play. And they're going to need a quick three. 
And timeout taken by the Hall Warriors. More drama. Yeah, the more drama. They were very, it's a nice break for Hall, however. You know, they got they call the the hell the ball, hell ball, and you know, they got it back. The, the, the clock could have very easily run out then. So they get another shot to to make something happen here. So what kind of play do you think Jeff is diagramming right now? Uh, hopefully it's a play where someone can make a three pointer. Yeah. <laughs> that, how, do you, how do you how do you get Gellerman or what can you do to get Gellerman or Raisner open for that three? Every coach on the planet has special situation plays for this for just this, um, and you practice them regularly and uh, you hope that you don't have to ever use them. Uh, but uh, you know there's an opportunity and I'm, I'm I'll be surprised if they're not knowing what they ex have to do exactly right now. It's just a matter of you know having the time to get your shot off and making it. Well, they have the top two three-point shooters in the conference on the floor. Raisner's made 50-plus. Gellerman's made 30-plus. Gellerman this afternoon has 14 points to lead all Hall Warriors. Kratis has 15 to pace Connor. 1.4 to go. Here's the inbound. Quick three on the way, it's no good. And the Connor Chieftains survive. They win it 50 to 47 and clinch a share of the Central Connecticut Conference Blue Division title. You know, it's uh, congratulations to the Chieftains obviously for such a big accomplishment after so many years. But uh, you know, you gotta take your hats off to Hall too for the quality of basketball they played today, undermanned and uh, just how stubborn they were the whole game. It was an outstanding, outstanding Hall Connor basketball game. Just great. It's been a pleasure, sir. Same time, same place next year, okay? Looking forward to it. And, and, and maybe uh, some volleyball mixed in. Let's, let's hope for that. Yeah, that's a fun game, too. Let's do that again. Okay. John Venier, great job today on the broadcast as the Hall Warriors and Connor Chieftains fight to the finish both times and both games won by Connor. The girls prevail 50 to 47. We're going to come back with post-game interviews right after this on WHC-TV Channel 5 as presented by the War Chief Sports Council. Back after this.
you down the road. You see where I sit? Oh, we oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not, not, not radio. Okay. All, right. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Coach, what are you thinking early fourth quarter? You're down eight. Morales falls out of the game. A little worry. Yeah, oh, yeah, that, and that was, that was on us. We totally blew that one. We didn't realize she had four falls. So that was, I mean, that was a big, big mistake on our part. And, um, Thankfully, the, the kids pulled through. They, they stuck together. They made their fall shots down the line at crucial, crucial points. And we got big stops when we needed them. So. You told me on the phone the other day, you said, hey, it's always somebody else who picks up the slack. It's always yeah. somebody different. That's what's great about having a great, well-balanced attack. Yeah. Nicole down the stretch making her oh fall shots, gosh. her her post play, just amazing. Yeah. 15 points. What a great game. Yeah, she played she played outstanding, and that's what you expect out of seniors at this time of year. You know, it, it always seems to be a senior that comes up big when they start to realize, that, you know, their careers are coming to an end in a, in a Connor basketball uniform. And I'm just so proud of the kids and the way that they battled and how they came back. And everybody down the line did something big. You know, uh, Sarah Hoisel had a huge tip at the end there. And uh, Nikki made some, she missed some foul shots too, but she made some foul shots. Lena made a foul shot. Delaney had a couple of huge ones. So it was, it was very exciting. You told me the other day you haven't had a banner up here in 30 years, yes. so that's going to change. Yes, I'm, I'm so proud. I'm going to start crying again. Um, I'm so proud of these kids. I mean, they have, they bought into what I asked them to do, and they have worked their butts off day in and day out, and now for the rest of their lives, they're going to get to walk back into this gym, and there's going to be not just 1986, but a 2016 up there too, which is it's, it's a really, really cool feeling, and I'm glad this group gets to experience it. Talk again about the transformation. Four wins a couple of years ago, and, and here you are. Is that amazing? It, it, it is pretty unbelievable, and I, I'm not quite sure how it happened, but these kids have these kids believed, and they bought in, and, and they've worked as hard as they could possibly work to make this happen. And, I, and again, I am so proud of them. Well, I know first things first, and I know you and the kids are a little superstitious, but, <laughs> but you know what? I've been known to have been seen at the Mohican Sun a few times over the years. Love to see you there in six weeks. Oh, wait, don't, put it, yeah, don't say anything too much. Step one was winning today and, and getting that conference championship. So, well, Congratulations. Terrific season. Thank you. All the best in the uh, coming tournaments and uh, just, just great job. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Okay. Colleen Duggan joined us. Congratulations again. What a win. Connor winning today. Overhaul. The boys win by four and so do the young ladies as they will be CCC Central Blue Division champions for this year. Plenty of thanks to go around, starting with the, the people in charge, Paul McConnell, Dennis Swanton, thanks to them. G2 Hundley coming out of WHC-TV retirement to come and join us today, along with Jen Evans, great job as well. John Benye, thanks to him, and all the volunteer camera people that made all of this possible. Doubleheader sweep this afternoon again for the Chieftains. The boys win 46-42 and the girls win 50-47 to claim a share of the conference title. For all involved, Pete Lamoureux saying thanks for watching. Until next time, so long everybody.